Hi, my name's Ian Peckrell, your host of My Psychic Manifesto. Uh, this is episode three, and uh, today we'll be interviewing uh, Tom Lyhard. Uh, I know Tom from the California Seth conferences. Um, Tom lives in San Jose. He's an energy medicine practitioner, and he's been fascinated with the Seth material for many years. Um, and today, uh, Tom is going to be talking about OBEs. Tom, welcome to My Psychic Manifesto. Hello, good day, and thanks for having me here. It's exciting to be able to unpack this and get this information out there to the general public. So, so thank you. Great, Tom. Is there anything about us you want to tell? Anything about yourself you want to tell our viewers? Well, you know what you've said, and you know I've I've taken a, a, an active approach in the California set conferences. So I've already given a number of talks on this topic that you can find easily on the internet. And so, yeah, energy medicine, and I've been combining the Seth material with energy work. The energy work I do is medical Qigong. So it's been very exciting as they really do dovetail one into another. I think of it kind of like Taoist yoga, you know, if, if you're not sure what medical Qigong is. And also lately I've been doing channeling, you know, practicing channeling and, you know, following in the footsteps of Jane Roberts and, and the other great channelers and really just, you know, doing it, you know, jumping off the cliff and going into the unknown and seeing what's there and exploring. So it's very exciting. And I feel like all these explorations, they really dovetail together. You know, everything I experience in the metaphysical realm really informs my healing practice, my healing work and vice versa. The healing work really informs, you know, the experiences that I have metaphysically. And of course, I love teaching this as well. So, you know, I have a teaching practice and a healing practice and it's just fun to share this with the world. So, yeah, thank you. Tom, since you've already mentioned it, and this show is dedicated to exploring the work of um, Jane Roberts, known as a body called the Seth Material, um, Jane Roberts was known as a trance channeler. So she would go into trance and she would channel an entity called Seth. Um, and I know you have a series of videos on your YouTube channel about channeling. Could you give us a definition? What is channeling? Good question. So, and I'll give you a little bit of a long explanation because it's not so mystical as people make it out to be sometimes. I truly believe that we all enter channeling states. And I gave a talk on channeling at the last California Seth conference. So, you know, you can hear the hour and a half version on my YouTube channel as well. But the Reader's Digest version is we all enter channeling states when we're acting on our passion, as Seth used to say, act on your impulses and really begin to actually act on what is being sent to you from your soul, from your higher self, from framework two, you know, however you want to define that, uh, coming, you know, what's coming from spirit, what's coming from your soul, right? You start acting on that, you enter into a channeling state. So it's not just verbal channeling, which is what I do, right? I verbally channel. I translate messages from higher dimensional consciousness into verbal terms, right? That's my art form. But someone that sings a song, you know, pulls out a guitar and just starts plugging away and just starts channeling that energy. But instead of into words and spoken words, they're channeling it into music. And of course, you know that many of these great greats, you know, these musical, uh, you know, that we elevate to stardom, you know, because we recognize that gift. They're able to channel directly through the music. And you can feel that when someone's a beautiful musician. It can be channeling uh, art form, you know, people that paint. Both Jane and Rob were actually painters, right? And so specific, uh, specifically Rob, right? So he would actually translate higher dimensional frequencies into painting. You know, some people translate it into acting, into any art form, scientists, you know, uh, Albert Einstein, right? It's like when you really listen to his descriptions or read uh, how he came to his intuitions, he was in a channeling state. He was really unlocked from physical reality. And, and then he figured out a way to translate his insight into mathematics, right? That's, that's a gift too. So these are all channeling states. We all enter channeling when we are in a passion state, you know, acting on our passion. We get really super conscious and super alive. And it's like this higher dimensional energy is, is moving through us. And then we translate it into whatever that's going to be, you know, music, art, painting, uh, singing, dancing, uh, verbal channeling, you know, writing a story, writing a book. You know, so it's not necessarily story. like the yeah. first Go ahead. The first, the first thing, hang on, that, that comes to mind when I think of channeling, I think of like the Oracle of Delphi, right? Who's a woman that's sitting in a cave and maybe there's gases or something coming up and, and, and getting into, into an altered state of uh, reality. 
But you're saying channeling is something as simple as like, you know, tuning into a song or, you know, singing or that Einstein, who Seth referred to as a prophet, um, you know, he didn't mainly use, always use his logical mind, he used his intuitive state. And so, you know, Einstein was channeling, people that are singing channeling. So you got right. a very, go ahead, but you continue. It's a very broad, it's a very broad definition, the way I define it. And then the sub definition, which people define usually as the trans channeling is, I just call that verbal channeling, vocal channeling. It's, you're, I'm translating this higher dimensional information into spoken word, into words that people can understand, that you can relate to on a physical plane. An artist might translate it into a painting. You look at the painting and you get this hit of higher dimensional consciousness translated into physical terms that we can understand, in this case, the painting, right? So, so it is a broad definition for me. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, that's, what, so we'll start off today, we're gonna be talking, um, Tom is grac Thomas has grac graciously uh, coming onto the show and we're gonna be talking about out of body adventures or astral projection. Uh, what is, Tom, what is an out of body experience, an OBE? Yes, that's a very good place to begin. So thank you for that. An out-of-body experience is kind of like how it sounds. It's, it's having the experience of your consciousness being in a vehicle that is not your physical body. So you can tell you're in a vehicle of consciousness. Usually it, it looks like a duplicate of your physical body. It might be opaque. It might be transparent. But it's the sense, you know, you're, you're realizing, wait a minute, you know, I'm not perceiving through my five senses. I'm no longer perceiving through the physical body. I'm in another vehicle of consciousness. So it's that full recognition that you're, as we say, out of the body, like literally, right? And there's a spectrum, right? So when people talk about lucid dreaming, I feel like there's a spectrum. You know, you might do something like remote viewing. You might have these mystical states, visionary states and deep states of meditation, for example. You know, you might start going into uh, for example, what I do, long distance treatments, right? And you start really perceiving things over a long distance. You know, it starts teetering into uh, almost like a shamanic journey or a lucid dream experience. And then the out of body to me is it really becomes the out of body when you have that realization that not only are you conscious and awake, but you're conscious and awake not through the physical body. You're perceiving through senses that are not the physical ones and you're operating in a body or in a vehicle of consciousness because sometimes it doesn't even look like a body, right? Sometimes it's a sphere of light or just pure consciousness, but you're operating through a vehicle that is not the physical one that you use in your daily life, right? You're in another vehicle of consciousness. So that's the definition that let, let's go with that one uh, as a working definition for this show. Um, Tom, when, what got you into all this? Yeah, that's a good question. And it kind of came looking for me. Well, so studying healing work was basically my mm, mixing or coming to terms with right livelihood, right? It's like growing up, I realized like, you know, I, you, you got to pay the bills somehow, you got to fit into society somehow and spirituality. So I w I've always had a deep interest in spirituality. So, you know, it's always been tugging at me. You know, I've been reading autobiography of a yogi and, and Zen mind, a beginner's mind, you know, these kind of books, the Tao Te Ching, you know, from an early age, right? And just like, and seeking like, what is the amalgamation of my deep interest in spirituality, but then nuts and bolts, pay the bills and be of service to humanity, right? And in, in the physical way. And so healing work was that perfect happy medium in all of that. But the auto body stuff really kind of came looking for me because I started having these, these incredible and very frightening at first experiences of separating from the body and just being in being in panic states and fear states. You know, it wasn't always this a very happy-go-lucky experience. It was eventually, but in the beginning, it triggered all kinds of fear, all kinds of, you know, what's going on? Am I going crazy? Am I paralyzed? You know, we can unpack any of that for, you know, why that happens as, you know, as you transition to that outer body phase, you go out of phase with the physical body, right? So you, you might have this state of like feeling like, oh, you can't move the physical, but you don't know yet how to operate the other vehicle of consciousness yet. So I went into panic states, right? And these experiences, they just kind of came looking for me. And later when I started Qigong practice, the, you know, what I referred to as the Taoist yoga, right? That's a very ancient, uh, from coming from China, an ancient Chinese uh, healing modality and practice. And that would actually start stimulating these experiences. But I started, started realizing that 
there's something different going on here. I started gaining more knowledge. I started really researching and doing the research and realizing what in Western medicine people call sleep paralysis is actually what in mystical literature are say, they're saying, oh, this is a precursor to astral projection. And it started to become less mysterious, less traumatic, you know, less fear was being induced. I started to make peace with the experience and they started to be very pleasurable. You know, I started to learn to really appreciate that vibrational state as a prelude to a wonderful experience versus, you know, being paranoid that, uh, you know, I'm paralyzed, I, you know, I can't move my body or I am somehow some part of my brain isn't functioning right. You know, all these different ways uh, that fear was induced. So, so yeah, so that's how I started. And I'll go into a little experience here. I was, I had this, this is one of my first out of bodies that was just purely like magical and not fearful, right? So I'm in my bed up to, you know, the covers are literally up to here. And so I, I, I'm very conscious that I'm under the covers, right? And all of a sudden I'm in this state where I think I've woken up and then I lift my hands and then I put my hand like right in front of me and I'm looking at it and like, it's like, oh my, oh my, oh my God, it's, it's see-through. I'm like, what, what the hell? You know see-through I mean? your hand? Right. It's like, I can actually just like, it's like a see-through hand. I used to call it the ghost hand experiences when I would journal about it. Cause I'm like, the heck's going on here? You know what I mean? And so I have a couple of these experiences and I'm like, you know, logical mind, you know, is, is parsing all this. It's like, okay, I'm seeing through my hands. And besides that, my covers are up to here. I can feel them. And yet like, what's going on here, right? So that started to really get me to look deeper and deeper and deeper. And finally, when I caught up with William Beelman's uh, famous book, Adventures Beyond the Body, it started to click into place as, hey, I, I can induce this, I can work with this in a conscious way. And of course the Seth material was helpful. It helped explain medical Qigong in, in a wonderful way because he's very, he really describes the energy planes in, in super detail and in a way that really makes sense. So all of that was helping, but you know, it was a journey. It, it kind of came looking for me, honestly. And you know, like, yes, I was fascinated with astral projection, but it was sort of like something way over there. And then it came knocking, you know, and then I had, I had to actually figure out what, what's going on with me. You know, not unlike your experience, right? When you mentioned in the previous shows of your psychic awakening, right? It's like, you kind of have to figure out what is this experience? What is it? What, how do I work with it? And how do I, you know, use it in a conscious way? So yeah, that's, that's how I started in this, in all this. Um, so Tom, could you, uh, what, why explore OBEs? Why explore astral projection or out of body experiences? What's the, you know, usually when I do something like most people, there's a payoff or there's an interest. Is it, um, you know, what, why explore OBEs? Yeah, that's a really good question. And, you know, it's going to be different from, for everybody. You know, what's going to ring your bells is not going to be what rings my bells and somebody else's bells, right? So there's different reasons for different people, right? First of all, I'll start with, you know, the, the most important is it's hella fun, right? It's, it's incredible. It's just, it's fantastic to really use your consciousness and to explore the mobility of your consciousness, right? And that teeters into the next idea, exploration. Are you curious about the universe? You know, do you want to rely on dogma to tell you the way things are, or do you want to explore for yourself, right? This is one of the attacks of William Buhlman. You know, he really loves to emphasize that, you know, find out for yourself. Is there life beyond the body? Find out, you know, is there different mystical places, you know, heavenly realms, does Shambhala exist, you know, find out for yourself, you know, it's like the exploration, right? So I think that, you know, and even the scientists, I think, eventually will catch on to the idea that the true exploration is not just outer space, but it's also inner space, exploring the inner dimensions of consciousness. And I believe those two will dovetail, but that's another can of worms to open up, right? Another one is fear of death, right? Do, do you, are you afraid of death? Would you like to have a conscious recognition that you do exist beyond the physical limitations, right? It's like, how would you like to rest easy knowing that life continues beyond the portal of death, right? You know, meeting, meeting up with people who have crossed over. That's another one, right? You know, sometimes people have these circumstances, you know, they lose a child, they lose a lover, you know, they lose their wife, their partner, 
You know, it's like these experiences, it's like we're not limited by physicality versus non-physicality. We can actually make contact with our loved ones. The, those, and that's another way actually that these abilities open up for me is, you know, someone I cared for very deeply crossed over and I'm just like, well, wait a minute, you know, it's like, you know what I mean? In. And so it's just it started triggering uh, these meet these meeting places these out of body meeting places and having closure having exchange and that can be very beautiful and very touching so many many reasons you know and you know not the least of which is that the fun you know just the exploration of it uh, but yeah I mean I could go on and actually here's the main one uh, that I feel is really important uh, so let me close with this one it's I really feel like we're moving into a society where we will be more tele-empathic, more connected, and where we will begin to really awaken within the physical life. And so, you know, one of the famous things that Seth is known for is the quote that you create your own reality. And you get that when you're lucid dreaming, you get that when you're out of body. But most of us are so caught up in the physical life game and the physical life dream, I'm going to say, that we're sleepwalking through our physical lives. So it's about awakening to that realization that we do create our reality and we can become lucid in waking and not just in dreaming. And so we become awake to the fact that we are creating and co-creating our reality all around us all the time. Life is like a dream. And so those, you know, when you have lucid dreams and out-of-body experiences, that begins to spill over into your physical life and you become more and more and more awake. You see through the illusion, you know, Seth used to call it the camouflage reality is what he referred to as the physical realm, right? You start realizing, you know, I'll, I'll use a colloquial term, you start realizing you're in the matrix, you know what I mean? And, you know, you're not being controlled, you know, like in the movie. You actually, what it is, is that you put yourself in the matrix to have a very unique experience. You know, your soul chose to be here, to be now. And it's wonderful, but you can live your life having that awareness that you are that spiritual being in this experience and you can awaken within this experience and you can go, quote unquote, beyond the matrix, which is what a lot of the mystics talk about, you know, enlightenment, to be able to move through the illusion and you know they call it maya in, in some circles you know it's this idea of awakening and becoming enlightened literally yeah and that's one of the things that seth emphasizes throughout the seth material is becoming a conscious co-creator right everybody's yes. always creating but with you know the you create your own reality or you make your own reality um yeah y-c-y-o-r you create your own reality is the idea that, yeah, of becoming a conscious co-creator. So we're always creating our reality, but why not do it consciously with, with intention? Exactly. As, as opposed to just running through a maze blind, why not use it like the holodeck on the Star Trek, um, the Star, Star Trek series? So Tom, could you tell some of our listeners, what are some of the ways to get and have out-of-body experiences? What are some of the ways to get out? Yeah, that is a very good question. and. One of the ways that uh, Seth would uh, speak to Jane Roberts and, and, Ro and Robert, um, you know, I'll start there since this is a Seth show. He talked about just imagine, you know, you're laying in bed, you know, it's this kind of state of mind where it's like body begins to fall asleep, but your mind is still awake. And we pass through that state all the time because we're, you know, in scientific terms, it's called a hypnagogic state, hypnopompic state, going into dreaming and then coming out of dreaming towards wakefulness, we pass through this, what I like to call the golden portal because it can launch a lot of experiences from there. There's, a, there's an exercise called Psy Time, right? Where Seth has you go into a very relaxed state and just begin to open up the inner senses, right? So it's going into a relaxed state, body relaxed, mind awake, and just beginning to visualize. So you can visualize yourself walking down the street, you know, or doing some of your favorite tasks. You know, if you're a painter, you know, you can imagine you're painting a painting, but meanwhile, you're in a state of repose and you're relaxed and it's all in your mind, right? If you're a, you know, if you're a Qigong practitioner, Tai Chi practitioner, you can imagine you're, you're playing the form, you're, 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 you're doing the Qigong, you're doing the yoga, right? But you're in your bed or you're, you're in a state of repose on the couch or in your favorite recliner. And you're just imagining yourself going through those motions and just make it as real and tangible as possible. 
and just really engage your senses, make it as vivid as possible. And you just do that. And you're training your mind to be non-local, you know, to be non-attached to the physical body. You know, in a lot of ways we do this for long distance treatments, right? Because that can start stimulating these abilities to see, you know, you're starting to realize, you know, you want information that your five senses can't get you, right? So you start turning on these inner senses, you find these light switches, as it were, in a dark room, you know, you start flicking them on and realizing, oh, I, I've, got, I've got all kinds of inner perceptive mechanisms besides these five senses, right? So it's that creative visualization, you know, it's like, it's, it's being able to really see yourself somewhere other than where you are, particularly when you're falling asleep or even as you come awake in the morning. You know, you awaken from sleep and you're that quasi in between state or maybe in the middle of the night you kind of wake up and you're just drifting back to sleep. Start visualizing yourself doing something fun, something that's engaging, something that's your art, something that's maybe as simple as walking, you know, jogging. Whatever it is that you do that you do with passion uh, will be, uh, you know, much better, right? Because you're so used to it. Or something that you do regularly, you know, it can be something as simple as like imagining yourself rinsing a glass at the sink, you know, because you're so used to that and it's so physical, you know, you can feel the water on your hands, you can feel the warmth, you can feel the motion of the hands. So one of the suggestions visual. you had for at the California Seth conference was like you, you said, imagine going for a walk, imagine doing yoga, imagine doing like an activity that like for me, it would be yoga. Like I'm good at yoga, right. I enjoy it, I do it on a regular basis. So yoga makes a lot of sense, or if you're into playing the drums or playing guitar, something you're comfortable with. And you'd also yes. said, like, imagine just going for a walk. When you gave the presentations, Tom did really lengthy presentations at the 2012 and 2013 Seth conference, and you recommended, like, picking a target area, meaning, like, yes. like I like going down to the beach. Like, there's a, a couple beaches that I really like, so if I was going to use... Uh, a target area, I would imagine myself being immersed in that beach, like, you know, the way, what would it smell like? What would it look like? What would my feet feel like on the sand? I already know what it would look like. But picking a target area, even a room in your house that you're emotionally invested in, that you feel comfortable in. I thought yes. that was one of the better points that you made. But yeah, go ahead. That, but those are all, you know, so some of the other, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. I just thought that was something you brought up at, at the Seth conference that was important. Absolutely, yes. And I, what I, I was just going to say, what you were going to say, you, 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 you hit all the points, right? Make it, uh, bring in as many senses as you can. You know, it's not just visual. It's not just you standing on the beach or, you know, I was talking about rinsing the cup. You know, it's feeling, you know, how does it feel? You know, the sand between your toes, you know, the sun on your skin, you know, bring in your feeling sense, bring in your scent, your scent, right? Your ability to smell, you know, oh, the salt air smells like this. I can remember that. So re fill in that picture as much as you can. Engage all the senses as much as you can. And that makes it that much more complete than just visualization alone. Um, so what, what are the, some, some of the stumbling blocks? Like, let's say, um, and, you know, I mentioned in one of the, the, when you interviewed me, you know, people can learn to do this. This isn't something just like channeling. Um, you know, these out of body projections aren't, it's not, you know, something where the bar is set really high. If you, uh, I, I, again, according to Rick Stack, you know, if you can learn if it's about the same amount of discipline you would show learning to play tennis or badminton or golf, you know, if you show that same amount of time and dedication to learning to, uh, you know, do you use lucid dreams or exploring OBEs, you know, this isn't, what, what are some of the stumbling blocks? What, what kind of, like for somebody that has no experience that's interested in achieving, you know, conscious out-of-body projections, what are some of the stumbling blocks or things that might make this difficult? Right, that's a really good question. And it's just like you mentioned in your previous show when you were describing your own experiences, you know, it's like any precursor to psychic development is, it re requires investigation of one's beliefs. What do you believe to be true about yourself, about your reality? Do you believe you live in a safe universe, an unsafe universe? A belief reappraisal, you know, that's that's really prerequisite and core to any spiritual development is just understanding how are you framing your reality. So if you have deep-seated beliefs that there's evil entities out there to get you, you're probably not going to project as try as you might, or you might have fearful experiences if you do, because you know you're gonna you're gonna create that reality for yourself. You're gonna be in that frequency zone, right? 
So really investigating the beliefs and it can be, you know, not so dramatic. Maybe it's something as, you know, I'm not any good at this or I'm not worth right. it or I just don't have psychic abilities, right? If right. you really bought right. into that. This is something you know? for mystics. This is something that, like people you yeah. have to de dedicate. You know, I had the false belief that this is something, you know, for mystics or something for like, you know, people have set themselves apart from other part, you know, society, somebody that's naturally gifted. Uh, yeah, and the belief that it'll never happen is a huge stumbling block. And in your website, Tom has a website, Modern Mystic Learning Center, and he gives a list of these beliefs, and there are a lot of different. Now, you mentioned um, on, on your website, and I'll put that up, as well as your, your YouTube videos of the two, uh, about out-of-body experiences at the 2012 and 13 um, Seth conference will, are available online at, and YouTube, at YouTube as well. Um, could you talk about, you mentioned several different techniques when I asked you about how to achieve OBEs. You had a formula that you called like an algorithm, like, you know, set, right. set aside. Could you talk a little bit about that? Like waking up at like, you know, maybe an hour earlier than you would and sitting, not laying down, but reclining someplace where you won't go directly back to sleep. Or could you, in a few minutes, talk about like this algorithm um, formula that you had for achieving OBEs? Sure, sure. And, and this comes from Michael Radiga, if you really want to investigate the cool. books. Uh, and also, you know, I have a lot of these books listed at my... Say the name again. Arts. Tom, repeat Michael the name. Michael Radiga. Okay. And so, yeah, I have a lot of these OBE books listed at, on my website. You know, if you want a further reading or if you want some, you know, good ideas to start. Rick Stack has his own out-of-body book as well. That's actually the first one I started with. 30 days. So, so yeah, there's a, a lot of great material out there. But to get back to your question, the algorithm is, it's, it's basically, you know, Michael Radiga, he's done a lot of research on what works, you know, for himself and then with many, many people. And he's come up with this idea. He's got a very scientific oriented mind, even though he's quite a mystic himself. So he's created a pattern, you know, a rhythm that makes it most likely for you to go out of body. And so, first of all, he's saying, you know, the most likely time you're going to project is going to be towards the last phase of sleep. You know, let's say you sleep a normal eight hours, the seventh and the eighth hours of your sleep, you're going to have a lot more REM sleep and you're just going to be much more accessible. So he's saying, do your attempts there. Don't even bother doing it uh, as you're falling asleep or in the middle of the night. He says, do it when you wake up, I, as to, you know, but not right when you wake up, but like you can set an alarm for six, you know, after six hours of sleep. And then make attempts, right? From there, just in that light sleep. Every time you drift towards wakefulness, you go through this routine. You pick a couple of, 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 of techniques and you do them. You know, we mentioned the target technique, right? So that's one. Uh, you can imagine like you're, viscerally, like you're rubbing your hands together. Obviously, you're not, you're physically, you know, you're imagining all this, right? So a very kinesthetic one. Uh, you know, visual, you know, you can imagine like you're climbing a ladder or you're climbing a rope, uh, you know, that's more tactile, you know, visual is like we mentioned walking or, or whatnot. So there's different ways you can imagine, of course, you know, from the get go, you know, you, you wake up. The first thing you do is just before you try any technique, you actually just try to get out. Right. See, you know, sometimes you don't need to do a technique. Sometimes, sometimes that could be imagining when you say that you could imagine just sitting up, right? Like imagine I'm lying down. Exactly. When you say try getting out, you could imagine just, hey, I am hovering six feet above my body. What does that look like? Or I'm laying down. What would it look like if I sat up? Like, you know, just trying just and then so you could also talk about like an algorithm means um, creating like, you know, a few techniques like I'm going to try imagining myself somewhere else like on the beach. I'm going to imagine myself in the favorite sitting room or I'm going to imagine myself doing yoga. I'm going to imagine myself playing guitar and cycling through because there might, you know, different people might be what certain techniques might be more effective. And with this algorithm, you can kind of scroll through. OK, I'm going to do technique A, B and C and kind of rotate through those quickly. So this is something we're not talking about taking an hour or two out of somebody's day on a regular basis, but you know, doing some of these written belief exercises, do I believe it's safe? Projections of consciousness are possible, are they safe? Examining some of our beliefs towards this area. And then actually like some of these techniques, it's trial and error, trying different ones. And one of the points you made, which I thought was extremely important, is being incredibly persistent, not giving up. Is this yes. correct? Like you might not have success at first and there could be some, 
but being persistent, could you just touch on that? We, we're a little bit o over time. Could you kind of wrap it up? And then Tom is going to come back also on our next episode, but the, we're getting, we're a little short on time. Do you have any uh, last points? And then, we, you know, when you come back next time, we can continue talking about this or some of your channeling videos, whatever you want to talk about. But any, any last words on OBEs? Yeah, just to dovetail what you said, being persistent means have no insistence on the experience happening. Go into it with a very open mind and don't insist because insistence is resistance, but also persist and be, you know, make it a part of your daily routine. You know, oftentimes they'll say a good 30 days before anything even begins to happen. Right. So building that, you know, it, it, sometimes it just takes time. So if it's your passion, just keep doing it. But don't get discouraged if you don't have it. Don't insist it's supposed to look a certain way. And just keep going and have fun with it. Most of all, have fun. Don't make it a chore. Don't make it a, uh, you know, do or die. Just have fun with it and, and play with it. Play with your consciousness. And that, you know, you're more likely to have that experience. So thank you. Thanks for having me. It's really exciting to be here. And yeah. I look forward to the next one. It was a privilege having you on the show, Tom. Yeah, I look forward to seeing you next time. And thank you for joining us here at My Psychic Manifesto with me, your host, Ian Peckrell. And Tom Lyhard will be back next time. The experiment continues. Whisper in the darkness As the December sun goes down Breeze blowing around your feet as you stumble from the ground The secrets in the moving dust Know why your heart still beats The stairs leading from the house Onto the sacred streets